What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, you pestered me. Numerous times. Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Did you watch it? I said, like, nah, man, I got, you know, I'm busy, busy. I got, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. And I watched it. And I had to watch it again. Brian, this reminded me, the feeling that I was feeling when I was watching this was the same feeling I had when I was watching OJ Made in America. It was riveting. I couldn't take my eyes off the TV. I had to keep watching. They did such a job, Brian, that some of the spectacle that you see towards the end, they did a good job in describing it earlier on in other scenes that I could already visualize it. And it was exactly as I thought it would look like. Mm -hmm. This was not only beautiful to watch, the dialogue that they're having, each scene is important here, man. It's... If I had to give it a 10 out of 10, I would give it a 9 out of 10. The only reason I would give it a 9 out of 10, Brian, is that they keep killing our black leaders. I'm tired of them taking our leaders. I know you are too. I did notice. I was I like, did that. word, yo. These two were compelling when they were on screen, especially the dude that was working in the empire. I couldn't take my eyes off of him because the, the 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 things that he would do and say, and the, and the facial expressions that the, they were like all dope to me. Um, but that's my own that's my take on the uh, on on this show, Brian. What's yours? Andor, yeah. So we we got a couple of shows coming out on this. One is before we had a chance to see this. But one first thing I want to even step back. I am loving the structure of this show. So it is twelve episode season, but it's four three episode arcs and so the first one definitely was like a slower burn but this one was a heist a mission and like when we got to the end of episode six which is what Pablo is talking about here I've seen it three times the wife loves this show which says something because she likes almost nothing that I've <laughs> in this genre but she yeah. loves this show and I was like Episodes four, five, and six to me are a masterclass in Star Wars, and it's a masterclass in storytelling. Like, because to your point, if you then, part of me, I think I might do this this weekend. I might go back and watch four, five, and six in a row now that we have all three. Because remember, they released one, two, and three at the same time, so you could kind of binge those. But this show just coiled that spring, that planning process. Yeah. It, it took its time to introduce you to all these characters. But by the time you got to the very end of six, you realized that they didn't waste any conversations. They didn't waste any of the dialogue. Every little thing they laid out came back around yeah. in certain ways. So... First off, I would say to Disney, if you got a crew putting this out, nobody else in these departments has an excuse in my mind for bad VFX, for, for loose storytelling and bad casting. Because other than Diego Luna, there's not really like a big name actor, actress in this, in this whole sequence but everybody's crushing it. Everybody is crushing it in the lines that they're given in the scenes that they're given. I can't name half these characters because there's so many of them, but it doesn't matter because I know they what good, their yeah. essence is and I care about them. 
And I care, I care just as much, honestly, we didn't spend as much time with the Imperials, but I do care about them too, in a weird way. Like when we see the intelligence operation and that one woman who clearly was ahead of the curve is burning the midnight oil, I'm kind of like hoping she finds something. Yeah. And then, you know, and you see like the Imperials at this garrison who are kind of like in the dark, right? They're just, they're taking <clears> orders, <throat> but they're not like, evil in that yeah, sense yeah, yeah, yeah. you're kind of invested in them like in a yeah, weird yeah. way so this show got you and and i the one thing i felt spoiler alert, i felt really bad for the young guy because you could tell the way he was being i'm like there's no way i said to my wife i was like there's no way this dude's making it out there's no <laughs> way this dude. i was like but i care about this guy he's a compelling actor he's delivering these really important messages and obviously he's going to have an impact on casting Ender because of that diary that he took with him. And I'm like, I just that think, I like, I know this, yes. I was like, I know this guy's gonna go out in a painful way and it's gonna hurt when he goes. But he get, he went out like after being a, after being a hero. That 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 was dope. That manifesto, like you can already tell from the beginning mm -hmm. when they first were on screen that he's saying some really like deep stuff to this dude and having yeah. some really deep conversations. Now, that manifesto, because that dude, he already told you, when I can't sleep, I write. So that manifesto is gonna contain contain a lot of the i think um it will develop him from what he is now to what he became in rogue one yes i agree and although i love their exchange at the start of episode six where you know this is where i think luna stands out because he in the one hand in one moment he's like partially sympathetic to the kid as he's kind of nervous but then when they have that exchange and he leans in, he says, do I look thankful to you? I was like, that's why I like this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that scene where the dude, uh, he's getting dressed and his wife is dressing his kid. He's 12, he can dress himself. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like that scene is not wasted though, because the wife and the kid become hostages. Yeah. And you see like, here's this hungry Imperial officer who is the caricature of, in some ways of everything bad but at the same time you're like this isn't darth vader this isn't the emperor like mm -hmm. you know and then he gets caught up in this and like he you see like the shock of the lieutenant's betrayal to him at the end and it's like the, the character in one episode like paid it paid off like from start to finish which then leads to <clears throat> to your point the truth like kind of the the Aldani civilization, their culture, the discussion of the eye. When they started doing an episode in four and five, I was like, oh, it's like a convenient cover for the mission. Mm -hmm. But then when they threw it across the sky, I was like, this looks cool. And then when it Beautiful. became central to the myth, then when it was like, oh, the eye itself is central to the mission and the escape, I was like, this is Star Wars, man. That moment of like, he pulls the lever, these outmanned, outgunned rebels with a cause who are running from the TIE fighter. I'm like, this is the essence of Star Wars right here. Yeah. This is it. Like, th And this chase scene was as good as anything in the we've gotten in the movies in like the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. It was dope, man. It was just dope. It was just dope. It's like I've told people like, yo, you got to watch Andor. Yo. You got to watch Andor. It's crazy when I talk to people. I'm like, you gotta watch this, y'all. I can tell you, you gotta watch it. This is how good this show is. Uh, let us know in the comment section below if you guys agree. Um, anything else, Brian? Before we wrap this one up, yeah. Um, be be real careful uh, having a conversation with Cassian Andor because when he when um, when he drew on that guy, I was like, man, this dude. <laughs> This new body count is gonna be really high by the time we get to no one. That's 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 micro from Punisher. That's micro from Punisher. He's 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 good. He's fantastic in that. Yo, he's fantastic in that. So but I was it, like, it, that exchange was perfect. And then like, I, but then it, it still came as a bit of a shock when they were like going back and forth. I was like, all right, how's he gonna resolve this? And then like, right in the middle of conversation, he just draws the blaster, takes Brian, him out. Did, and I'm just did, like, I'm, yeah. Did you wonder if he was testing Andor? little because that guy had been testing him the whole time that guy clearly like had a weird like kindred spirit but also rivalry with him like all through the three episodes um but yeah just the way they like wrote the scene and it was it was kind of going slow not a lot of music and then all of a sudden just like out 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a feeling that was that was it was either gonna been it was either gonna going to be that dude getting on uh, Andor like making a move, but he just did it. He just did it. Andor just did it. And doesn't he remind you of like a cross between Antonio Banderas and Al Pacino? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, for sure. He, yeah. He's he's a great he's a great actor. He's also a great like facilitator. Like he plays off really well. He's not dominating these episodes even though he is the star no he's, he's doing yeah. a great job and i think i think the other thing i loved about this mission which goes back to something that i knew would be true of this show is this could we knew andor would get out of this alive yeah. but other than that any outcome of this was possible like yeah. if you told me you got to the end of this and the mission failed and the trawler was shot down and destroyed, and he escaped. I said, "I believe it. I believe it. it. That could work." Yeah, like that's what I love. It's unconstrained, so the drama is real. That's why when you talked about the characters who were killed, like it hurts because you like you don't necessarily always see it. You know, they're not all getting out of it, yeah. but when it happens or how it happens is not cliche. Yeah, yeah. This this show is really well done, man. Oof. The performances here are just that scene when the girls are underwater. Oh and man! Great shoot, great cam work too. Yeah, that like um, yeah. You do stuff like that. You do it, and you do it right. It's gonna be dope. Yep. So I heard Tony Gilroy talk about it on a podcast, and he said something that I thought was really interesting, which is he said that he didn't want to do this. They've been trying to get him to do this for years. Who's Dan Gilroy? His brother. Okay. Yeah, so that they write together, and so like, okay. they, like so Dan wrote most of the second arc. Tony wrote the first arc, but Tony's a showrunner. Got it. So he was talking about the show. He's like, they've been trying to get him to do it. He didn't want to do it, but he said, I don't think we should do this. He's like, but if we did it, here's how I would do it. But one of the things he apparently said was it basically has to be budgeted like a film. He's like, it's not worth it if you don't do it that way. So he's yeah. like, in the podcast, he was like, after Rogue, this is how this works. He's like, after Rogue, I had a lot of credibility. And when they finally came around and were kind of like, we're willing to put up the money to, to do it. He's like, okay, I, I can make this work. But he said, I got on set. He's like, we had ideas, we had some stories. He's like, my brother and I got on set. And he's like, there's all these British stage actors who I didn't know and had never worked with. But he's like, I was told by some of my friends in the industry, they're like, you're gonna love these people. So he's like, I get on set and we start. And he said, I realized quickly that these people were capable of anything. So he said, I went, we went back to the writing and we said, you know what? We're just gonna crank the writing up. We're gonna make it more difficult. We're gonna make it more dense. We're gonna make it more complicated because these actors can deliver any line and, and i was like that's that's brilliant writing that's like i have an idea and a concept but i adapted to the personnel that i have we talk about in sports all the time and i yeah, think the yeah. show is benefiting because they have these almost no name but super capable stage actors who are getting you to buy into the yeah. drama of what's happening and i was like oh that, that's it that's the show right yeah. there yeah 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 let us know in the comment section below man Andor is one hell of a show. And to my surprise, when I asked Brian if this is only six episodes, he told me it was six more of these joints. Two more full arcs. Like we're basically starting over in episode seven in some ways. So I'm fascinated to see where we go. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing if he what he reads in this manifesto. What? Yes. Oh my God, I can't wait. Because that dude was very eloquent, that kid. Yep. Very, very much so. Um, yeah, that's our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.